Good morning, Dr. Eric here, Fanwood Back Relief Center, offering convenient, affordable relief of your neck and back pain to the Fanwood, Scotch Plains, and Plainfields uh, area. Today, we're going to talk about coffee as I drink my coffee. And the topic is Does coffee slow the brain? There's a recent study in 2021 where they, they measured uh, coffee's effect on the brain. Uh, coffee's a great stimulant, it's great to help you focus. For centuries, people have been consuming it to help to um, concentrate, perk up their energy. Um, keep in mind, this is just one study, but what they found was they recruited 32 habitual coffee drinkers and 24 non-coffee drinkers, and they asked them to compete, uh, complete excuse me, questionnaires used to measure stress, anxiety, depression. Each participant underwent a resting state functional MRI that measures connectivity in various parts of the brain. The coffee drinker group exhibited decreased functional connectivity in two important networks, somatosensory, which process sensations like pressure, pain, and warmth, and limbic, which is involved in emotional responses, memory function, amongst other things. The coffee drinkers also had decreased um, connectivity in the subcortical and posterior brain regions, which include motor and emotional processing, as well as visual network and cerebellum. Among the coffee drinkers, researchers identified a clear association between coffee consumption frequency and reduced connectivity. The more coffee one drank, the less connectivity they had in uh, these areas of the brain. The coffee drinkers also had elevated stress and anxiety levels, which were even higher in the heaviest coffee drinkers, which we already know how uh, people with um, stress and anxiety should definitely limit the amount of coffee they have per day, uh, especially towards the evening so they can rest and sleep. Uh, in the second phase of the experiment, researchers asked the non-coffee drink drinkers to drink a cup of coffee and then image their brain for a second time. The post-coffee scan showed altered activity in the same areas of the brain, um, which suggests that coffee itself is more likely to be responsible for reduced brain connectivity rather than individuals with re reduced connectivity being more likely to desire coffee. So the question is, is coffee bad for you? Well, like I said earlier, this is just one study. Um, there's a lot of different other studies um, that show uh, coffee is good for a variety of functions. Um, the research shows up to 3.5 cups a day could be associated with a reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, death from cardiovascular disease, early death, and lower risk for some cancers and conditions that affect metabolic health and liver function. Keep in mind, like I said, this is one study, more follow-up studies and research need to be done to see how it will affect the brain long-term as well. Um, but what it shows typically uh, with this evidence shows is that in this current state, coffee still has more benefits than risks. Um, but like anything else, in moderation. So um, try not to go above that 3.5 cups a day and you should be safe. Um, I like to see positive research on coffee because uh, I drink coffee every day and I love it. Um, but obviously there's continual research in this area of study. Um, but if you're waking or running to, to, you know, to make that coffee in the morning and when you get out of bed, you notice there's, you know, various aches and, pains, uh, aches and pains in your neck or your back or your legs or your wrists, then that's the time to call your chiropractor. And that's what I'm here for. Uh, any questions about this study or anything else uh, that we treat in our office, please give us a call, shoot us a message. We are here and always happy to help. I hope you enjoyed this video and we will talk to you next time. Have a great day.